So we have our new featured artist this month, Esmeralda, and I was hoping to ask you just a few questions about what drives you to to create the type of art that you've created, and then we were hoping to go through some of the pieces and show people what you've made for us. So how long have you done art? Um, I've been doing young, uh, since I was very young, uh, probably about 11. Um, I was actually kind of recruited to do projects, like mural projects and, and things like that. Um, probably a good 13, 14. Um, there's a local artist that used to be here in Grand Rapids. His name was um, Jose Narezo. And he was one of my early teachers. So I got to work with him on uh, a, mu a mural project. It was a, a transportable mural project. And it was a collaboration between Grand Rapids and Lansing and Detroit. So we had um, Nora Chapa Mendoza in Detroit teaching those students. And Jose Nareso taught the students from our side of the state. And so it was really cool. It was a cool project. Uh, I want to say Casa de Unidad in Detroit has the mural, or what's left of our mural. Um, there was a, there was a bit of a fire and things like that. Oh. So hope, you know, I hope to look at it again one day. Okay. Um, but many years ago, many. Oh, years I ago. hope that works out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about some of these pieces? Um, this one I really love. This is from my Michigan series. Uh, Michigan has a tendency to be uh, a state where everybody's like, oh yeah, there's a lot of people who are German descent or Polish and. And there's not a lot spoken about the other people here in the state. So um, Mexican Americans have been, well, Mexicans have been coming to Michigan for at least over a hundred years. And they came, uh, some of them for agriculture and some of them for the car industry. So Ford had actually gone down to Mexico and recruited people to bring them here to train them on how to sell his cars in their country. And there's like a, a culture of, you know, um, selling people Ford. And, Okay. All the way in Mexico, but a lot of people stayed. So um, this is actually a piece from the Mexican bingo game called Loteria, and some people know it as Chalupa. Um, and there is a card that's the hand, and so I decided to draw the hand as my own hand. Oh. And uh, and of course I included <laughs> the Upper Peninsula. A lot of people always forget the Upper uh -huh. Peninsula. It was very inclusive of you. I Thank appreciate that. Yeah. Um, it's it's also a little take on it because it's like the the actual hand is, is very old. It's kind of drawn in the 1920s or something like that so okay but it's, it's a memory and so when people see it they identify with it they immediately are, are drawn to it and they're like oh loteria and i love that game you know so oh fun and of course it's just like a, a great take on how we describe and how we show people how to get around michigan in general yeah right um, right definitely yeah <laughs> so always we, hold up the hand <laughs> we always hold up the hand and we're like yeah we're cool right here. do you want to talk about either one of these two pieces in the um net? in the middle i do have los musicos in palenque and so there's a great tradition in like um, in the rancho, I guess, in rancho life, in urban, uh, not urban life, but more in the countryside, where people would gather and they would bring like animals and they would do um, different things, like they'd have concerts or they'd have cockfights, which was something commonplace, or they would sell, you know, animals. Um, so we have like uh, a tradition of the Day of the Dead, where um, we usually have these little skeletons who come out and they're always doing something interesting something like normal day-to-day -day stuff so I, I have these these particular uh, uh, skeletons doing music so it's just that's it's, really cool I, and I like that you included a female violinist so. yes yes I do too so it's just kind of cool um, and this one we did for uh, it was a long time ago but it's called the apoyo which means my my support and it shows all like the people it takes to actually get someone mm. to, to go through school or get an education. Um, so I actually have, the girl is actually my, my old roommate. Anytime somebody was either studying or like uh, taking a nap, I would sketch them. It was, oh, <laughs> that's it's, amazing. It's, because otherwise you had to pay like $10 an hour to get somebody right, to right. pay for you. So I was just like, okay, I'm gonna take advantage of this fact she's studying. I'm gonna draw these things in. And these are actually people who worked at the university. Oh, okay, so, this is really beautiful. I love this. You. It is really such a great depiction of how many people it takes for one person to succeed. Yes. That's yes. great. It takes a lot of people. Around the corner here, and do you want to talk about either one of these three? Any of them? All of them? Sure, sure. I can go through. Okay, um, great. This one was commissioned by MSU originally as a painting, and the commission was to get a carnival theme. Oh. And so in carnival is, is something that, it's a holiday, it takes place in Latin America and in Brazil, you know, in particular, it's very famous. It's, it's a very heavy part of their economy. 
Um, but the carnival dancer, um, when I was commissioned to do it, um, I thought of, you know, who is, who is the carnival dancer, um, particularly like racially, um, it, you know, someone who is, is darker, someone who's this, someone who's that. And so by and by, every time I went to go to my committee meeting, MSU wanted her to be skinnier, whiter. And so eventually the carnival dancer they ended up with has nothing to do with this one. <laughs> Wow. So, but she remains, and I think she has a lot of clothes on in particular, but she was censored. Um, and I was asked to make a skirt for her, and I was asked to add things and just all sorts of crazy stuff. Isn't that just so telling about what people think they want to view in our society? Well, it is, and it's also, um, it just shows how much we control women. Yeah. It really does, Absolutely. because it made them uncomfortable, Yeah. you know, either because of her race or because of what she was wearing. Right. Um, but at the very same time, I said, you know, if you ever really do go to see Carnival, yeah. <laughs> you're going to see less clothing. Okay, right, <laughs> right. Less clothing. How about um, this one? This is called Los Gallos. And this is part of um, the, the Mortito. This is part of the Day of the Dead um, series I had going. So these are actually cock, the cock fight. Like that would happen in the palenque. Okay. And so in the little. Oh, I can see them in there. Yeah. So they're just going at it. <laughs> okay. I'm not. Great. I'm not really big on animal violence, but like this is very still part of the culture. It's still part of the culture. Yeah. It's, it's still witnessed. Um, this this one's, one's beautiful. This one's called Tierra y Sol, and we talk about how people belong to the universe, and we talk about how people belong to the earth, and how you know we we personify that uh, in Mexican culture. Things are personified, even if they don't have a spirit, they still have some kind of entity. So, like even racks, we're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, little rack. <laughs> you know, if you mm. kick a rack or something weird, um, you honor it. You know, you give a, a little bit of honor to it. So, in this one, I wanted to personify, um, you know, just like the the universe in general, but where we are at, kind of. And I, I did want to put the um, the earth forefront because we really have to think about what's going on. And um, with with our environment, it's really important that we take care of it. So that's beautiful. One of them. I love that. Thank Such you. a story in each picture. <laughs> okay, tell me about this one. Um. Well, there's like a little a little cult following for Frida Kahlo. I don't know if you've noticed. Um. But she's everywhere. So yeah. um. I, when I was younger, I was learning about Frida, um, as an artist with um, Jose Narezo and with um, Nora Chapa Mendoza. They wanted to make us see that there were other artists out there. And it was really hard to find a female artist because at the time, um, I want to say, you know, you don't, you didn't have a lot of big names out there. And so Frida is one of those big names. There's also Maria Esquerdo. There's also all these other women, but they're kind of downplayed um, by the three muralists in Mexico. Okay. So uh, at the time, it was hard to see other people. So I think um, a lot of her following you have a lot of um, Mexican artists here, Mexican-American artists, Chicanas, who really identify with her. And you also have the non-Chicanas who really identify with her and her struggle because she was disabled. Mm. You know, she had, um, as a child, she had polio. So one of her legs was, you know, shorter than the other and it was kind of limp. So she always wore these really big skirts so you would never see them. Um, uh, you know, she, you wouldn't see her legs or anything. And she was a really go-getter. She was great. So I kind of made her into a goddess of sorts, and um, like her husband was really into drawing these calla lilies and you know whatever that is. But like um, so I just kind of have her coming out of like this 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 like bouquet I guess. Mm -hmm. um, like she's blossoming into who yeah. she wants to be, who she yeah. needs to be. So, I love that. So I made her a little a little naked, but she's got a little naked. naked. I know you were a little concerned about I that when you concerned. hung that. And I said, listen, I'm in we Grand do Rapids. breast exams every day here. It's okay. <laughs> this is the natural beauty of, of a woman. So I, I appreciate that. Okay, cool. And, and then following up with more Frida, Frida-ish, um, I have a best friend and she actually had a unibrow. So I would paint her often and people would, um, they would find her very intriguing. So I was just like, I'm going to, I'm going to draw you. So more calla lilies, more, more Frida but a lot more hair and just hanging out in shorts and things like that. Very cool. <laughs> and then okay, this one I love. You told me a little bit of a story yesterday. Yes. And I was just fascinated. So I have a series. Um, it's based in pre-Hispanic culture. So we talk about our ar archetypes. And so like in Hispanic culture, the mom is a really big hardcore, you know, we, we're into mom worship in, in Mexican culture. So um, in pre-Hispanic culture, um, you have the mother who is, you know, Mother Earth. You have Coyoshaki, she was the goddess of the moon. 
And then you have her brother, Huitzilopochtli, who is the god of um, war. And so I guess she gets it. Boishakwi is this one, the goddess of the moon. And she gets in a fight with her mom. And her mom and, and her are going at it. And the brother comes and he chops her into pieces. Right? And so we talk about, you know, um, we talk about the impact, right, of, of actually voicing what you're feeling or, and, you know, kind of challenging other issues and things like that. We have, um, you know, this, this archetype, and she's broken. But in my series, I eventually piece her back together. Mm -hmm. So here we have the original where she's in little pieces. You can see her legs mm -hmm. have been dismembered and things like that. And that's actually, like, they discovered the stone in, like, I want to say 1978 in Mexico oh. of the, the Goyo Shalpi. So I, I really, I really identify with that because, like, the year I was born. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's great! So I was like, all right, all right. I love that. And, and this, this last series here. And this last series are called Retablos. And the retablo in uh, Mexican culture, you'll see them everywhere. People kind of put them up on walls or they'll put them up around churches around saints, particular saints that they're um, asking favors of, or if they're asking for, for God directly. And what they do is they give thanks or they ask for help. So a lot of these are handwritten by normal people. Like it's just everyday people. They're not like studied, they're not artists, they're not all these things. And in the retablo you will see like um, a picture of either a saint or somebody holy, and then the person and what they went through. So their trial or tribulation. So in the three pieces that I have for the retablo, the first one is for the um, student teachers of Ayotzinapa. And these are some 43 students that went out um, to go ask for funding at a, an event in the city. And they're actually from the countryside and they're being trained to be teachers for their rural areas in Mexico. And these guys disappeared. So they were arrested and they were disappeared. People are looking for their bodies. Their families are like, you know, you have to um, give us our children. And the government was basically trying to sweep this all under the rug. And in the um, abilities that we have here on this side in, in the United States, they had people here. And they actually brought a lot of the survivors here to speak about what happened in Ayotzinapa so that there was an awareness and that our government would let Mexico know that we're watching. Mm -hmm. um, and in that, they started trying to find these guys. But what they ended up doing was kind of uncovering a whole bunch of mass graves that were not them. There were other people, and they had gone back for like generations. So these are really old mass graves. So this is a common place. Um, so in my retablo for them, we're asking for them to come back, and we're asking for them to bring, bring back like people who have been disappeared because it's not just them, but there's like a long process of um, corruption that has led to what we call the desaparecidos, the people who are disappeared. So they just oh, no. disappear. So in that one, it's kind of like because of the area where Ayotzinapa is, it's a Mayan area. So we have like um, the original like god of corn and some hieroglyphs, just to, so you know where they're coming from. Wow, so much feeling in your it's, art. It's it's a lot of I stuff. I feel I find it really relaxing to paint because it gets a lot of the the ugh out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we all need things to get the ugh out. Yeah, so, so perfect. It's, so it's good. So in this one in particular. I was mentioning that this is the Virgen de Junquila, and um, there had been a woman who gave me a little stamp of the, the, the Virgen de Junquila, and I have not gone to, to Oaxaca yet. I will. I will one day. I'll go. You will. I'll go visit that lady. I'm going to go visit the lady. <laughs> but um, so then here we're declaring, like, um, thank you because this person, you know, is free of cancer, and here they are at yoga. And then this person. I do love that part as well. <laughs> go blue. Go blue. All right, all right. And then here's this other person at a bank, and they're, they're thinking that they didn't get robbed and, you know, killed oh, or anything. Oh, okay. So then I have the lady who actually gave the original um, stamp in there, and then the Virgen, and I actually have the capital city of Lindsay. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's just kind of poking so in of, there. A lot of gratitude. A lot of gratitude. So we're just giving gratitude, and then you know the story so and a lot of these are like little stories some of these are really funny like not this one but you know there's some that are really hilarious yeah ones. it's like we got caught doing something in the in the by the river you know kind of crazy stuff <laughs> can but, you tell me about this right here oh so like there's this whole movement with saints like they dress them right and you know it's, it's a big thing it's very honorable to dress saints but in the recent years they've been like i don't know why she in this this saint in particular she gets like a lot of gold jewelry. People give her like gaudy pieces. They put makeup on her. 
they they put fake eyelashes on her. It's just really interesting. So I'm just like trying to figure it out myself. But um, with the Virgen de Junquila, um, they really in Oaxaca. Oaxaca is be known for their um, dresses, right? Because they have this wonderful embroidery. They have this wonderful decoration. But in particular, there's just like this um, push for her to have like this jewelry and these outfits. Like, I mean, she they change her every day. Oh. <laughs> so I want to say out of all the virgins, you know, we have the Virgin Guadalupe, who's supposed to be the really big one. Um, this one gets like more more decoration than, than oh, the other one. Oh, okay. So it's kind of interesting. Cool. It's like it's like a status. I don't know mm -hmm. how to describe it. Okay. And so this one's just another one um, giving thanks. Um, this one says... Uh, thanks to Jesus for my brother. He's better now. And it's um, mountains because this person, um, their, their, their name in Yoeme is, is Tete, and that means mountain. Oh. So, you know, so this person we're giving thanks because he's, he's better. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So then, and then he has like water, like washing, washing him. Beautiful. So are these things that people ask for specifically, or people, are they ideas that you come up with? Well, these, these were ones I had to come up with. And so I was just like, because uh, it was, um, everybody was supposed to make retablos, and we're just supposed to come up with them, right? <laughs> so I made these. But um, on, in daily life, people will make these, and it will be specific to their situation. And if you go into Instagram, there's actually like a, there's actually an Instagram page that is dedicated to retablos, and they'll even do the translation in English. Oh. So that you just start dying laughing, because some of these are so funny. <laughs> They're hilarious. You just start reading, and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, or you'll you'll find ones that have like maybe your friend's name in them, and you'll just start laughing. You'll send it to people. And you'll be like, hey, somebody mentioned you in one of these. <laughs> so speaking of Instagram, do you have? How can people find you if they would um, like to either commission some art or buy any of these pieces? Yes. How do they find you? So I am in, on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. So my name in fa uh, in Instagram is La Michicana. So L A M I C H I C A N A. And uh, on Facebook, I'm Esmeralda Perez Gonzalez. And I know that sounds crazy. We'll post it, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll post it. <laughs> so it's but, but yeah, That's so great. I'm out and about. Um, usually, I just go by La Michicana at Gmail. So okay. if you need to contact me, that's probably always the best way, because for whatever reason, I get all my emails. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, messages don't come through. I don't know why. But like the email comes through. So I, I, I've been trusted that one. So, um, but for the most part, th those are other w ways you can reach me. Um, commission, whatever you need, um, make a big work if you need, um, uh, say like a classroom for kids, like they need a project to do, that kind of stuff. Um, I teach like mural preparation and, and planning out murals mm -hmm. or even portrait. So um, I, um, I also do digital design as you saw <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because that's, that's really what's, I won't say that's what's selling. Like, um, painting is hard. I want to say, um, at the, during this pandemic, painting is hard for artists because if we're not showing, mm -hmm. we're not selling. Right. And so being online is really important, but the right. canvas has been slow. Moving canvas is slow. Yeah. Moving posters is way faster. It's just saying. Yes. Well, if you want to ask anything further or contact Esmeralda for any of these pieces, um, we'll put her contact information in some comments for this video. So. Thank you. You're just a wealth of knowledge. This Thank is really, <laughs> really interesting. And I'm sure you could probably speak much longer on all this, which I would love to have you do sometime. <laughs> so thank you for sharing all this thank with you. us, Esmeralda, thank you for and for hosting. lining our walls with all this beautiful art. Thank you. Thank you for hosting. <laughs>